Hello out there. It's Jason from Game Right. Happy Friday. Happy Gen Con. Hope to see you somewhere in the chat. Um, we have lots of great things going on today. Oh, there goes my sound again. We are going to be spending a full day playing games here at Gen Con Online. For those of you who are joining, welcome. Uh, for those of you who are just here to learn how to play this wonderful game, Marshmallow Test, also welcome. Uh, before we get started, uh, just a couple announcements. One is that we're going to be giving away a copy of this game, Marshmallow Test. So the way you win it is by commenting in the chat here. Nora, who uh, works in our marketing department, will be monitoring the chat, and she will pick out a lucky winner to take home, or to be sh not to take home, but to be shipped a copy of uh, Marshmallow Test. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. In a nutshell, I'm Jason from GameRight, and I'm here to teach you how to play this wonderful new game that we launched this year by renowned inventor Reiner Knizia. He also has uh, created for us our game Loot, which is a fantastic card game, as well as the Porta Party game Over Under, uh, a nice game of guesstimates. Um, we uh, and we love this new game. It's a it's a great game for it's called it's a trick taking game. It falls into that category of games like Hearts and Spades and Whist, uh, where you're going to be not necessarily um, making bids, but you're going to be playing to get the highest card in a trick and win. But being that it's called the Marshmallow Test, it's a game of delayed gratification. The longer you wait to get your tricks in this game, the more points you score. Um, so that is it in a nutshell, but I think the best thing for us to do is to take a look at it in person. So I'm actually going to switch over to uh, my other camera and we will um, we will uh, take a look in depth. Hold on one second, let me bring it up on screen. Okay, there it is. Marshmallow test. This is what the box looks like. It comes in this lovely box with uh, some of the features. It comes with uh, 60 playing cards and a bunch of these squishy marshmallows. Actually, why don't we open up? We can take a look and see what is inside. So we've got a set of rules. And uh, here's the deck of cards, as I mentioned. There are five different suits from one all the way to 12, each in those five suits. And then it also comes with this fun bag of marshmallows, these squishy marshmallows. You can't really eat them, but they look like they're real marshmallows. There's some small marshmallows. Those are worth one point. And the big marshmallows here, those are worth five points. All right, how does it set up? So as I mentioned this game, it is a trick-taking game. Every player is gonna be dealt out a hand of cards and uh, each player is gonna try to do their job to collect tricks. Now, the number of tricks you collect determines your score, but actually it's not your tricks that determine your score, but it's your opponent's tricks. You're actually gonna be scoring for what other, other for the tricks that other players have in front of them. So um, I'm gonna set up a three-player game. And in a three-player game, it depends on the number of tricks. You can see how many you set up in the game. So in the, in the instructions, it says for a three-player game, game, you're going to need four tricks to go out to win uh, for that round. And you want to be just not the last player to go out because the last player will not get any points. And I'll explain that how, how we, uh, as I go on. All right, so I'm going to shuffle this deck and we're going to deal out 12 cards to each player. Every round has the same number of cards dealt per player. And the winner is going to be the player is the first to get 20 points worth of marshmallows. Uh, so it takes a few rounds. It's a two or three round game. We won't play a full game in this case, but I'll give you a taste by playing one round. And I will s simulate that by playing out the hands of three different players. So I'm shuffling up this deck nicely and then I deal three hands of 12 cards. I realized I should have done this upside down. And 12, okay, and the rest of the cards go out of play. They're used in another game. This, incidentally, this game is for two to five players, ages 10 and up. So up to five can play, which is nice. Most trick-taking games kind of cap out at four, but this one actually works out nicely at five players. So each player is given a hand of cards, and here's a, an example of what that looks like. And I would say the best thing to do is to kind of sort by color and then also by number. So go from low to high. So I'll do that for each of the players. 
uh, sorting out the different colors, and that will give us a sense of what cards we can play. Because as in any game that's a trick-taking game, you're going to, if you've got the highest card in the leading color, you win the hand. Uh, with one exception, uh, after the first round, there actually becomes a trump card, which uh, a trump color, a trump suit. And so um, that suit would beat out any uh, the, the highest card in any other color. So if, for example, in the second round, let's say green was the Trump suit, then a two of Trump would beat out a red 12 if that was played, if that makes sense. So um, that only starts in the second round. So in the first round, there is no Trump. I'm just going to get all the hands set up as we go through the move. This person has, this person is actually, there's void of green. You can see they've got no green in their hand. So that's going to be an interesting strategy. There's a lot of thinking, as you know, if you've played in these trick-taking games of when to play the cards, you want to win some at the opportune time, but then you also want to lose some because you don't want to get stuck with too many. You don't want to go out too early in this game. So let me sort these more or less by color and by number. And then I'll sort out this last player's hand the same exact way. Uh, okay, so well, this person actually has a little bit of all the, also a bunch of green. There's gonna be some competition for green as I saw from the other first player's hand. So let's see, this goes here, here, and boom. There we go. Okay, so this player only has one red and one yellow and a bunch of greens, a bunch of blues, a bunch of purples. All right, so I'll put them in their different spots around the table. And then we'll start with this player. Actually, the rule goes is whoever ate something, the last person to eat something marshmallow goes first. So actually, I did have s'mores this past weekend when I went camping. So, um, well, I'll, I'm, I'm the only one playing this game, so I'm going first anyway. Um, all right, so uh, to start a round, you're just going to pick any card from your hand and you're gonna lead it face up to the playing table. So again, you have to make a decision whether or not you wanna win the trick. Uh, if you wanna win the trick, you're probably gonna play a high number card. But if you uh, wanna lose it, you're probably gonna play a, lo a low number card. So why don't we start off with that? I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go out too early. So I'm gonna play from that hand a two. And this player goes around to, those goes around clock, clockwise to the left. So the rule is, is that you have to follow color to the leading card played. So if you have it in your hand, which this player does, then you must play it. If you don't, in case, in, in the case of the player who had, um, I think it was this player who, oh no, uh, one of the other players had no, oh, this player, right? Yeah, has no yellow, right? Um, th then you could play any card you want. So this is a chance to slough off a card that you may not want to play. And maybe this player will play a low two as well. So that ends that first hand. You look around who's got the highest number on the table. This player does. So they win the trick and the trick goes face down in front of them. Now, as I mentioned, once one player has four tricks in front of them, that ends it. They're out for the game. So you have to time it very carefully about when you get it because you're going to be out. This player will be out once they get three more tricks, but they're only going to score for their opponent's tricks in this game. So you really want to give the other players a chance to win some hands. Otherwise, you're going to end up with nothing. If this person goes all four and there's no tricks here and no tricks here, they would score zero. So, okay. The, the winner of the trick leads the next hand. So they're gonna look in and see what they wanna do. So maybe they're thinking strategically as well too. I don't wanna win too early. So I'm gonna play a low card with the knowledge that anything will beat that at this point, unless nobody else has blue. So they're playing the bets that someone has blue. And so they do, this player goes, hmm, uh, I don't know if I wanna win it either. So I'll play a sort of low card. And then there is a kind of take that to this game, depending on what you have in your hand, you could play a card purposely to kind of throw off the game. Um, in this case, this player has to play a card higher than a five. So uh, let's say they play the eight down and they would win this trick. So this goes face up in front of them and they lead the next hand. Um, sometimes it's good to void out colors because it gives you a chance to slough off other cards. So maybe they try to do that by playing out the remaining blue from their hand. Um, and if I remember correctly, this player had some blue um, and they're gonna also try to get rid of a lower card. And back over to here to this player. And they only have one blue left themselves and they have to win it. So they're gonna win that hand right there. So that's it. So each player's got one trick face up in front of them. And now this player is gonna lead the next 
trick. Uh, next hand. Um, hmm. Interesting choices here. Well, it's very likely that when a red comes out, they're going to win this. So we know for a fact that as a as a play that may be one you want to hold till later. But uh, perhaps they just lead a since this word gets tricky. No pun intended. Uh, what to play? So. Now this player has no green, so they can play anything they want. They're not going to win the hand, right? There, there's no chance of winning once you, um, unless this was a trump round, and it's not. The trump round starts in round two, um, so they'll just play down a random card there, and this player will has to follow suit, even though the last player played the yellow. They've got to follow suit, and oh, they could either, you know, give the they could either screw over this player by making them stick it with them, or they could win it. Um, I. Think Think they, they've got a lot of high cards here. They're going to do that. They're going to stick that player with that. So player over here wins their second trick. And again, remember, four tricks ends the round for that player. All right, they're going to go again for another play. So they really don't want to win that third trick too soon because that's going to put them in danger of winning the fourth trick. So they'll play that to really almost ensure the fact that they're not going to win. Um, so this player decides to play down uh, seven. Now each player, you can see I'm kind of playing it. Each player is baiting their time. They're trying to not go out too soon. Uh, that forced this player. This player is going to have to take that trick. So they, it doesn't really matter whether they play the nine or ten. So they also have got their second trick. Uh, and they lead the next hand. Um, so this is a real, you know, you're making these calculated decisions each turn. Do you go for high cards, low cards, trying to feel out what your other players have in their hands. And also if you're a good card counter, you know, cards already been played because you know, there's only 112 of green, 112 of blue. It's a very strong hand for this player. There's a very strong likelihood they're going to win these two tricks. So I think the strongest thing to do is to probably be able to get rid of a void out a suit. <laughs> And that was a good play because it forced this player to play down this card. Little did they know. And they're going to obviously win that trick. So this player will just throw out their highest card. So now this player's got three tricks. They are one away from being out for the round and collecting points. Um, what are they going to do? Do they want to try to? I think they're going to try to stay in the game by playing down a low card. And that was good. So this player plays down that and this player will play down that and they will win their third trick as well. Oh my goodness. So both these players are on the edge of going out for the round. Now, again, you're scoring points for your opponent's tricks and we'll get there in a second. They're going to play out. So they'll, they'll try their best to also stay in the game for as long as they can. But there's no blue here, so this person is in good standing to just slough off a high card that might give them points, so they'll slough off the green, because again, it's blue that's leading this round. And also, this player has no blue either, so they're gonna um, they're gonna slough off a card. Did I play that from the right hand? Oops, no, I'm sorry. Yes, I did, okay. Um, uh, so they're going to slough off a card as well too. And look at that, with that two blue, that player is out for the round. So this player here is done and they will score the number of a marshmallows equal to the opponent's trick. So one, two, three, four, they'll get four marshmallows. So we'll give this player four marshmallows and their rest of their hand is dead. So they just kind of wait out while the other players continue on for the round. Now it starts off for the next player to left. So this player is going to go leading and it's now just between these two players to go out. So again, this player doesn't want to go out. They want to let this player get a few more tricks. They're going to try their best to play out. So they'll play down their, one of their low cards. And let's see what this player has. In fact, they have nothing. They can't play a higher green. So this is going to end the round as well, too. So they throw that down. And that is the end of the round right there. So this player gets uh, scores tricks for their opponents as well. They get one, two, three, four, five points for that. So they'll get that. And this last player here gets zero. Nothing for that. So that's the end of the round. All the cards get collected and reshuffled for round two. The only difference is, is that the player who was the loser for the previous round, this player right here, is going to, after looking at their hand, be able to call what they want for Trump. So I'll just deal that out. We won't play the full hand, but we'll see what would be a good hand or what would be a good color to call for Trump for that next round of play. So we deal out 12 cards again to each player.
believe that's 12. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I'm just gonna look at this hand here because this was the loser player's hand. We'll organize it and then we can maybe decide what we think are the best. So you have to make a decision. You call the color for that round. Starting in round two, you're gonna call the color that is the Trump color for the rest of that round. So let's sort out these cards here and take a look. Wow, there's a really wide variety. I mean, this player has a lot of yellow or four cards in yellow, three in green, two in purple and three in red. Um, there's a, I mean, this player would guarantee win these and if they called Trump on that. So that's two tricks. This is what you're thinking about. What do you think you want? So perhaps maybe what they would do is try an offsuit to call us Trump. I'm just you know, thinking of a strategy or a it's a, it's a, it's a tricky game in that way. You've got to think about your strategies, either maybe the red or the green. We don't know what these other players have in front of them. And that's what makes it a little bit of a difficult prediction, but perhaps they would pick red. So then red would be the Trump suit for the next whole round of play. Anytime a red card comes up, that would be the highest card of any other color. So you'd play probably two or three more rounds until players accumulate marshmallows. Again, scoring marshmallows for your opponent's tricks until someone hits 20 marshmallows on the nose. That could happen in mid round, by the way. And that's exciting because you, uh, it doesn't, it, the, the game is sudden death. As soon as someone hits 20 marshmallows, game over. So it lasts about 20 minutes or so, 30 at the most, but um, it is really a very nice family game. It's got a little bit of everything that I like about uh, trick-taking games. It's got some predicting. It's got this, uh, you know, a little bit of screw your neighbor, depending on how you want to play the game. Um, and then also just having to figure out what do you play now versus what do you hold on for later. Um, so there it is, Marshmallow Test. Uh, brand new, it's in stock now. I don't know if you've been commenting, but we are giving away a copy of Marshmallow Test. If you comment down below or in the comment section, uh, say I'm interested in winning this game or give us a comment of any sort uh, and we'll pick out a winner and we will send you your very own copy of Marshmallow Test. There it is. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, by the way, we've got lots of other events happening along this Gen Con online weekend. As a matter of fact, in um, less than an hour at 3 p.m. Eastern, we will be having a chat with inventor Emma Larkins uh, about her brand new game, which we published called Abandon All Artichokes. Uh, she's going to be chatting with Nora on our Instagram account. So if you haven't already, please go check out our Instagram account. That's uh, Instagram dot com slash game writer at game right on instagram uh, we will be live on that and then at five o'clock back here on youtube we're going to be doing a playthrough of our new game dungeon drop which we published along with phase shift games here it is this really wonderful innovative game um, so jason from phase shift games i'm jason as well too but there's a jason over phase shift games he's going to be playing along and teaching everybody how to play this cool game where you're going to be triangulating and trying to uh, harvest as many cubes gold gems from this dungeon that you create on on the table. So there it is. Uh, feel free to go visit our socials like Facebook and Instagram to see the rest of our schedule for the weekend. We've got a lot of other fun how to play events. Um, we also will be doing some more giveaways, including, and I'm going to show it for the first time here, some brand new promo cards for Sushi Go Party, including Inari and Pickled Ginger. These are, these were going to be, we were going to have these live for the first time at uh, Gen Con, but unfortunately, since we don't, we will be putting them up uh, somewhere online. We'll let you know in our social. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe here on YouTube and we'll keep you posted on when those are live. Again, we've got brand new Sushi Go Party promo packs, Inari and Pickle Ginger. You're seeing them here for the first time. Um, yes, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jason from Game Right. Thanks for playing. Have a great weekend and we'll look forward to playing with you again soon.